everyone welcome back to my channel it is true crime tuesday however i'm willing to bet this is going to be true crime thursday that's what i'm thinking because life is crazy and that's what's what's up you know no other explanation just life is crazy however i would like to invite you to listen to my true crime moment so, if you would like to hear about General Butt Naked, that's right, I said General Butt Naked, please stay tuned, and without further ado, let's get spooky. Okay guys, my name is Detroit Alley Cat, and I do true crime, I do unboxing, I do all kinds of spooky stuff. So, if you like my content, please think about subscribing, leaving a comment, pressing the like button, ringing the bell, doing a little dance taking a picture of it and sending it to me because that helps me get through my day. You can send that to, I'm just joking, you don't need to. Alright, let's talk about general butt naked. I thought that this would be a light-hearted, funny, where are you going microphone? Here you are. I thought it would be, <laughs> we're having a moment with my microphone. Alright, so I thought it would be really funny to talk about someone named General Butt Naked because I thought, you know what, this this will be great. Like, how could you go wrong with the name General Butt Naked? But apparently you can. So here's the thing. Like, I always love to say, like, this crime is the worst of all crimes. But you know what? Africa has got us beat on everything. Everything. Every every continent cannot compete with Africa and their true crime. Their true crime is seriously horrendous, especially with the civil wars that have been happening over there, and that is exactly what we're going to talk about today. General Butt Naked was a very feared warlord. He was from Liberia, he uh, was born and actually, now I hope I don't slaughter this, but Manravia, Liberia. And he was born 1971 and his actual real name was Joshua Milton Blahi. Interesting real name. Sounds like a very just like good person, doesn't it? He was the former commander of forces under Liberian warlord Roosevelt Johnson, a.k.a. a bad guy. He was a part of the Sarpo tribe, and the reason that that's important is because this tribe had certain beliefs, and they, like, they had, I guess they were kind of considered, like, a coven, and all these things that they, like, they, they practiced some sort of witchcraft, but it's kind of weird because... They believed in Satan and God and like, I, I don't know. It just is a bizarre thing. Blahi was known for his violence and he was known as one of the worst warlords in Africa. And, and what's weird is that these warlords would go around and they would like give each other these like fake names so it could be known on the streets. The only way I could describe it is like, you know how like if... You hear about gang members, they have like these gang names like Slick or Bones or Ghost or I don't even know, like stuff like that, you know? But these people, they would be like General Rambo, uh, Sergeant Slit the Throat. Um, like I'm not even lying. And then there was General Butt Naked. And I, I just can't help but really look at the irony of the fact that they went by these cute like goofy humorous names but really they like they like ran around from town to town just completely terrorizing everyone and yeah it's it's kind of crazy so Blahi was known for his violence during the first Liberian civil war this was in the early 1990s I believe that civil war lasted around 14 years and this is where you guys are going to want to know if you should i'm not really going to go too in depth about like who he killed because i can't or like 
you know, give you deep descriptions about it, even though what I'm about to tell you is going to be deeply disturbing, it's not going to be as descriptive as some of my true crime videos. So I just want you to remember that I'm not going to give you like my big warning, like, you know, like I do sometimes, but I, I will tell you, um, he was known for murdering. He liked to cannibalize. He, he raped a lot of people. When I say people, I mean boys, men, women, children. Yeah, bad, bad person. And then this is where I do get a little bit, like, angry. <laughs> Not like that other stuff wouldn't upset me, but I, I kind of, I feel very passionate about this. But General But Naked was known for mostly having child soldiers. And this really is deeply upsetting because half of the world's population's child soldiers are in Africa. And it's like, it's a really heinous civil rights violation that's happening. These different groups of people, they recruit children or they just get children so many different ways. Some are human trafficked. Some It's just like all these different things things and these children are like basically raised in a in an army and and they try to give these kids like these false sense of families and the things that they do to them especially in Africa Liberia which two of the I don't know if you call countries on the continent that are known for this is the Congo and Liberia and you know, they, they give them guns, they sometimes kill their family, they tell them like, hey, you have to do this for us. Sometimes they rape them, they have the girls in there as sex slaves. It's really, it's just a very disgusting, horrible situation. And, you know, one, one night I really like dove deep into it and watched a documentary about it and watched a movie about it. And I sat there the whole night bawling my eyes out for the pain and just absolute awfulness that this it's just a horrible horrible thing like and it sucks but anyway he was he was known as the most evil man in the world at least in Africa that's what they said and one of the things that Blahi was specifically known for was the fact that he owned up to killing at least 220,000 people. He carried out regular human sacrifice. Uh, he was known for the cannibalism of children. His political party was the United Lib Liber Ter Liberation, I don't know, Liberia, L Liberation, Liberation, Libe Liberation, are you kidding me? What liberation? Let's just say Liberation, Liberation, no, no, this is horrible. Liberation, Movement of Liberia for Democracy. I know that I just like hack that all up and I hope that I can edit it, but I might just show you how rough that was. I'm not sure. Anyway, he was also a high priest and became a spiritual advisor to Samuel Doe, another bad guy. Samuel Doe is a Liberian politician. St he staged a violent coup in 1980 that made him the head of the state. He was eventually executed by a third bad guy. There are lots of bad guys in Liberia, or at least there was lots of bad guys, like super bad guys. I'm not really good on this whole, like, who's the baddest of the bad guys, but I just know that there were tons of bad guys. Rough place. He worshipped Nayubi Ewe. I really, I just can't tell you how sorry I am if I said that wrong, and I really mean that from like the bottom of my heart, okay? He was selected because of a fight. So like he was put into this position because of trial of battle or, you know, like I'm getting very Game of Thrones, aren't I? He led his troops naked except for shoes and guns. And like 
I I found pictures. I'm gonna I'm gonna show you what this man did and how he looked because like nothing would strike more terror in my heart to see someone like General Butt naked just go down my street, butt ass naked, wearing nothing but shoes. And we're not talking good shoes. Not like boots or nothing. We're talking like Nike slides. I don't know why you'd think they'd wear boots, but no, no. You know, so these slides. And then sometimes he'd like take a colorful wig. They have that on. And like he would pretend to have like a purse. Then like sometimes he would like wear women's clothing. And then he'd have all his like little child soldiers with him butt ass naked, which awkward weird just freaking weird and then he would get them to be naked and dress them up and then what they would do is they would like take all these drugs like cocaine meth and heroin and crack they get all like woo and then they would drink a whole bunch of liquor and so then they would take an m16 and they would have a machete and they would go to these towns because these were civil wars now civil wars are are a little bit different than like I don't want to say big wars because it's a big thing when you have a civil war but when countries fight each other now a civil war is just freaking chaos everyone against everyone neighbor against neighbor so they would go into these neighborhoods that are just like people like chilling like cooking dinner relaxing and all of a sudden general butt naked shows up in your town with like 30 butt naked crazy kids all hopped up on meth and and they're gonna chop your head off yep and that's um that's that's what they did they did this for i think like seven to ten years they did this for seven to ten years and like okay back to back to it so he was known to sacrifice a thing a person a child preferably he loved children he really did he had a special place in his heart for them and he would sacrifice them beforehand and this way he was like able to avoid bullets and i promise you he says this to this day that that it gave him special powers so it, he he was quoted saying when he took the sacrifice usually it was a small child Someone who is fresh. Blood would satisfy the devil. Now, I just find it weird that you're in a coven worshiping gods, but you believe in the devil. It just is kind of weird. Just just a little weird. Then he would go to the water where kids were playing. And he would hang out like an alligator. And grab a kid in the water. And then, like, crack their neck. And, like, take them with him to, like, sacrifice him. He admitted killing an innocent child and he took out the heart and divided it into pieces and he gave it to his troops to eat. I know I said I wasn't going to tell you descriptive things. I mean, this is descriptive, but we don't know the name of this child, so it's bad. I can't lie. It's just, it's just bad. He said he met Satan regularly and talked to him. Now, he still goes with this story to this day, and this is important to remember, that he met Satan regularly. Before leading his troops into battle, I kind of went through this, he would get drunk, drugged up, sacrifice a local teenager, drink the blood, strip shoes and strip to shoes and guns, wear colorful wigs, carry imaginary purses, slaughter anyone, chop their heads off, and play soccer with their heads. He killed so many that he lost count. Said he had magical powers that made him invisible. Many of his soldiers, actually most of his soldiers, were the child soldiers that I was talking to you about. So I want to go over just a tiny bit of some of the statistics of child soldiers. I kind of already did, but, you know, a lot of people said that they were trying to stop the child soldiers in Africa. And, and I don't want to say this is a lie, but this is a lie because in 2016, almost double the amount of child soldiers were still existing in Africa, which is 120,000 children. 
are still being used as child soldiers. So all of these, like, laws that they're making for, like, you can't have child soldiers. Why, why do they, are, why are we recruiting children and strapping bombs to their backs and teaching them how to kill people? Like, they were known as the Butt Naked Brigade. Now, now remember, as funny as the Butt Naked Brigade is, we're not talking about grown-ass men. We're talking about 10-year-olds, okay? 10-year-olds running around butt-ass naked. And these 10-year-olds at night, like, let me tell you, they got treated like grown-ass adults. And I, yeah, it, ugh. They were also part of, like, a unit that were mercenaries, so... It was just pretty, I don't know, guys. I don't know what to say. I, I'm pretty disgusted about the child soldier thing. After the Liberian Civil War came to a halt because it's ended, Joseph Blahi decided that he was no longer going to be general butt naked. He was going to convert to Christianity. And let me tell you how this happened. So his reign of terror ended in 1996. This was when this Liberian War ended. Not because it was during the Liberian War and he decided like, oh man, I should really stop this madness and make a difference. No, no. We waited until like they like ended the war and decided that they were going to try to go after warlords and hold them accountable. But he ended up m hooking up with this guy named Bishop Kun Kun. He was a pastor. He heard from God about him and fasted for 54 days. Then God gave him powers to infiltrate his old coven. So this is like the old tribe that he was talking about. He was infiltrating. I don't know how he was infiltrating him. This is what he said. He's a very confusing man, this Blahi. God told him to repent while he was infiltrating his coven. So in 1997, Blahi went to Ghana and he went to a Buddha Buram refugee camp and this is home to many Liberian refugees. So just imagine this, right? You escape the Liberian war. Maybe your kid got killed, your wife got killed, your brother got killed. You decide to go to this camp and like hang out because this is safe territory and you're like there living in the camp feeling a little bit better which refugee camps aren't really that great and um along comes the man who killed all of your family and he's like i'm here and i'm a christian and i'm here to repent how would you handle that a lot of people didn't handle that well he said that when he preaches he sees victims and relatives and feels bad and begs for forgiveness now i personally watched like a whole like recording of him doing this and some of the victims are just straight up like get away from me you are a liar and you are just doing this because you want to like convince the world that you're a good person and you're not and then some of them are like yeah he's a great guy and he's really a strong person for standing up for you know not killing people but his satanic powers before made him... No, this is what he said. This is so great. So, he, when he runs around and asks everybody forgiveness, he tells them that he had satanic powers before that made him do it. So, listen, he's really a good guy. Like, Satan gave him some powers and made him kill 20,000 people. So, it's cool, you know? You, you have to do it. When Satan comes a-calling and tells you to get naked and tells you to go grab some kids and get them naked, you need to do that because that makes complete sense. I mean, that's, that's what I would do. So Blahi is the president of the End Time Train Evangelistic Ministries, which sounds kind of cultish, the End Time Train. And the headquarters of this is in Liberia. He is married to Pastor Mrs. Josie. Yes, she's titled that in the article and has four kids. How fabulous. This way he gets to know, like, you know, what would he feel if somebody took his kids and made them child soldiers? In 2004, there was a documentary in which Blahi spoke. He ended up going back 
to Liberia in 2008 from Ghana and confessed. He went in front of like this board and this board was called the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Liberia. And this is the one part that I do kind of give, I don't know if I would say credit because like, it's not really credit, but like, okay, so there's this board and they make this board and it, it's basically a board where you go up front and you tell this board what you do, what you did in the civil war and they judge you for it and they decide like what crimes you should pay. So they have this on TV so you can watch it, you can Google it, you can find it on YouTube somewhere. He goes in front of this board. No one forces him to, but I feel like he would have eventually been arrested. I don't know. This is just what I think. And so he goes in front of this board and this woman asks him, like, how many people do you think that you killed? And he just straight up says 20,000. And the whole courtroom is like, oh my gosh, right? So he goes in front of this board and everybody's like, he's going to be judged and he's going to pay the price. They decided that they would give him amnesty and that nobody that committed a crime before 2002 can be charged. Now remember, the Liberian Civil War started in 1990 and lasted 14 years. It would have ended in 2004. If you committed a crime between 2002 and 2004, then you could be charged. But if you didn't before then, those 12 years, you just ran around killing, raping, and plundering people you're good. Like, you're good. And they decided that it took a lot of guts to go in front of the world and uh, say that he was sorry. In October 2016, he appealed to the masses to donate half a million dollars to him so he could, like, help child soldiers and drug addicts and teach them how to farm and make better livings for themselves. Now, a lot of people say that this is, like, a scam and he's just doing this because he wanted money and other people say that he's actually helping people all I know is that he's living in a mansion with his family and he seems to be doing pretty dang good you know I don't I don't know what to say he runs around he basically like preaches to the masses and talks about forgiveness because you should forgive people. I mean, of course he would talk about forgiveness because he needs to be forgiven. And I, was he like a victim of the Liberian War and like he was forced to do this or did he just like go too far? I just can't stop thinking about the fact that he like had child soldiers with him and like I don't care. Like, there could have been a point that you stood up and said no. I just feel that way. And maybe I'm wrong. But yeah, so that's the general butt naked story. I was kind of bummed out that it wasn't like a more of a, a fun, heroic, weird guy running around naked. But it turned out to be a guy running around naked, killing and eating people and chopping their heads off. And, you know, that's a bummer to be honest. Anyway, if you like this story, let me know. If you didn't and you think I did a crappy job, let me know what I, I did wrong because I always like to hear that even though it makes me sad sometimes. But you know, you gotta, you gotta take critiques. You guys have an amazing day. Thank you always for watching my videos. Remember, stay safe and stay spooky. Bye.